What's up, guys? Vince Ryder here. Welcome to Vince Talk, where uh, it's a series where I talk to you guys, where I discuss about, you know, anything pop culture, news, or just, you know, anything else. But for this one, I you know, I guess it's a deep one because I usually don't share sad stuff at all in this channel. Um, what I will say before I get into the sad stuff, and I bet I guess that's, you know what, I'm going to save that for the end because right now I don't have the energy to really be sappy and all that, you know what I mean? But... I do want to talk about my new phone. Yep. Your boy's got a new phone. New on new. New on new. And let me tell you, I dig it. I really, you know, it's the iPhone 14. Man, I know that, you know, pretty much I shouldn't flex about this. But my goodness, it just feels good. For the videos I'm doing, it has never been more satisfying to do Let's Reads more than ever. Uh, my old phone, it feels like a pain. Just reading through a cracked screen for you for your guys' entertainment. But at the end, it was worth it. Now it's worth it when I'm actually doing the reads, which is something I haven't experienced in a long time. Not to say that I don't enjoy it, but man, I, it feels good to actually do something that in some cases supposed to actually give you joy. And, you know, I experienced that by just, you know, sharing some reads and just making videos because... I finally got a new phone. It just feels like it feels good because let me tell you, the old phone, it, there was a crack screen, crack screen. There was a black like you know line to it. If you saw my posts in in the discussion board, you might see the phone itself. And let me tell you, the difference is it's like black and white. It's like you know because let me tell you, there was just this screen that was just like you know this black screen that was in, that that was like spilled over the old phone. But when I got this new phone, no cracked screen, full visuals, it's a perfect size. It's basically like a, because I got the Pro, so it fits my hand perfectly, especially with the pop socket on it. Man, just the amount of, you know, satisfaction right now for doing something, the upgrade, it's like up there. And I wouldn't say it's like perfect, but it's too perfect. It's perfect enough. I'm just like, yo, this is what I need. So, I gotta say, I really enjoy this. Let me, let me tell you, it's 11 out of 10. I, I, I could have been more happy having some new products sometimes, you know? And of course, it's Christmas, and this is my Christmas gift, but it feels good to have a new phone. And I'm excited for just the amount of videos, because I was worried that it won't have a record thing. It does have a record thing, but it has like different, you know, uh, you know perks to recording screen on screen. So... And definitely some more content when it comes down to actually making these videos because I'm excited for the amount of content that I will bring and because of this new phone. I earned that. I've been doing a little bit of Christmas shopping here and there, and I'm already done. So And also, I got my presents here. It's just a bunch of clothing, also some new shoes. Man, it feels good to have some new Nikes. Um, but yeah, I earned that. That's uh, pretty much what's been going on. Even though it was a, you know, a sad week because of what I'm about to share it later. But yeah, I earned that. Let's get into some news. So I don't know what's going on with the with the FIFA Cup. I, I literally haven't watched nothing about it. I mean, soccer is, listen, you know, when it comes to ball sports, I got no interest at in any of them, okay? Basketball, football, I don't care about the Super Bowl. I don't care about no NBA Finals. None of that. And especially the same thing with FIFA, with football, you know, as they call it there. But here in America, we call it soccer. Uh, you know, there was just a part of me where I'm just like, yeah, I don't really, I don't know. I'm not really too excited. I'm not feeling nothing. Because it's it's like, what are you supposed to be excited for? Knowing that it, it's just, it's it, you know, especially me predicting a team that, you know, Argentina was going to win. And it was like, you know, there was like trends of like, oh, Morocco is going to win. And then you have different, like, you know, like Brazil and Korea and stuff like that. I'm not sure if I see Italy or U.S. in here, but yeah, really nothing much at all, at least from my information when it comes to the World Cup, because I have not watched one game, one game. You can't really make me into that at all, especially like maybe in the summer, it will be different. I would watch something for experience because I do a lot of things in the summer, but now since it's like cold, like it will be like 30 degrees at night. And also like 40 or 50 degrees in the during the day. And sometimes it wouldn't like it would rain and it would just get musty out there. 
you know, especially here in the Bay Area. Like, um, I honestly just don't feel like watching anything sportsy at all because now I got to feel like, man, I really want to go out. But I can't because it's so freaking cold. <laughs> um, and it's not satisfying when you sweat in the cold. That's when my sickness comes in, okay? Like, that's when I start coughing and do the, you know, the sniffles and stuff like that. So, yeah, I haven't really been into that at all. But, hey, what I heard is Argentina won. Did I spoil it for you? I don't know. Who really cares? Because I don't watch the freaking FIFA. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. Okay? I, I don't know. Maybe put Mario in there and I'll be into it. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, moving on. Also, the whole news, like, you know, earlier this week, uh, Elon Musk stands down from Twitter. There was this whole thing that Elon was actually going to ban because, you know, he's now the owner of Twitter. Probably not anymore because a lot of people say, like, oh, he shouldn't st- he should stand down because he put a voting poll. And Elon asked, like, hey, should I st- stand down from Twitter? And it was like an automatic, like, well, duh. Of course, you got to get, you know, many people will people like agreeing that yeah you should be gone from twitter <laughs> gone from you know because especially this rule where you're not allowed to advertise different like you know links your youtube channel your twitch channel other competitors your tiktok on twitter which doesn't make any sense that is the worst kind of like rule regulation you ever put on an any website because let me tell you that would make you lose money that will make you lose many people, and many people are going to be mad. And I guarantee you, there was a probably already like an online protest about this whole thing. Every people, every everybody was rightfully mad about this situation when it comes down to Twitter of you actually not putting your you know YouTube channel, your you know your TikTok, your Instagram because of competitors and because of the rules of Twitter, those dumb rules that they have on. And yeah, and of course Elon got a lot of backlash of it. <laughs> so racing other social medias. To actually promote your stuff it just really doesn't make any sense at all but you know the people have spoken and i don't know what happened next because i don't really go on twitter that much maybe for fan art and for other stuff but yeah that's what i just heard i learned that uh moving on there's also this whole trend about this term called adults adults kids you put those words together adults boom bada boom and yeah, there's been a whole trend about that. And pretty much I'm just like, well, has it been like this for the longest time? At first, there was this guy like named Matt Walsh that was talking about. It. Now you got Clownfish talking about. It. And I want to talk about it because it's, I find it interesting. Because, you know, there's this different opinions. Like, no, you should, you know, especially with Matt Walsh's dumb, like, opinions about it. Where he's like, oh, you should be, you know, supposed to be sharing this for your kids and stuff. You need to be a parent and, and all that. He doesn't say it like that. But he said it in a way where I'm just like, well, dude, I'm. what is wrong with you? <laughs> Listen, there's, a, there's points where I do agree with him. And there's some points where I just don't agree with him. And that's the beauty of the internet. That's the beauty of certain media, especially when it comes down to these political channels. Like, there's some stuff that I agree. And there's, you know, could be a bunch of stuff where I'm just like, well, that's just dumb. Because let me tell you, let them live their lives. Okay. It's, it's, it's the same opinion with him when it comes down to talking about gay people. I never understand with people like people shouldn't be gay at all. Well, you can't. What, what are you talking about? Let them be who they want to be. I don't freaking care at all. I mean, there's a part of me. Yes, I do care because I'm part of that community. But at the same time, my own business. <laughs> Why can't we just do that? Huh? Why can't we just actually have our opinions and just, you know, just just keep them to ourselves? Instead of having like a big, you know, social media, like, uh, you know, a following of us giving our wrong opinions sometimes. Well, not wrong opinions, but your own opinions. And then you get backlash. Don't be surprised. Okay. And this term adults, of course, there's like, you know, a, you know, a, a generation, of, especially in Gen Z or something like that, where people like collecting toys and whatnot. And let me tell you, I wouldn't say it's like the same thing as video games. Okay. Even though, like, his argument as well was like, well, people playing video games, that's just not formal. Like, something like that. And I'm just like, what are you... I'm not doing anything childish when I'm playing video games, okay? Like, I, I don't really get that. You see so many people building a career playing video games and stuff like that. Gaming is, is just a very, like, you know... You know, in society nowadays, it couldn't have been more normal as ever, Okay? Don't be surprised, like, you know, knowing, like, you know, you don't need to be called as a gamer anymore. We're at that age where it's like, well, yeah, I play games. So what about it? 
Doesn't mean I'm a freaking esports player, a gamer. Ooh, I game. Oh, Mountain Dew and whatnot. All these damn stereotypes and stuff like that. You know, that's whack. Because I don't know. It's it's that idea of like let them let people be what they want to be. And with the whole adults thing and about like you know adults collecting toys, like that's already been out there. That's already been like in the limelight of like you know discussions of when it comes to people like either being toy collectors for like you know collection purposes they keep it like fresh the box is still there you don't open it at all and they keep it as a collection or the ones that really do play toys and even though i find that weird of like a adult man playing legos and stuff like that even though it's like a smart and formal way like just building or something like that yeah, to me, like, especially when it comes down, but the only weird thing is that when it comes down to the whole pretending thing, like, for example, like, if I'm holding two Lego characters, oh, you're, are you going this way? Yeah, I'm going that way. Oh, you're going to die. Oh, no. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, that's kind of weird. You know, I'm just to be honest. I'll, but you know what? That hasn't, you know, I, I find the same way when it comes down to gameplays when, like, the whole uh, role-playing thing in GTA, Okay. In GTA, in the community, and like especially in Grand Theft Auto Online, in that community, they do like RPs, right? They do like role playing, like different cops, like you know, role play as a criminal and role playing as a janitor, and just pretending, just basically pretending in a virtual world. And that already happened out there. It's just that you can see there's a lot of variations when it comes down to the discussions about adults playing toys, adults trying to relive their childhood, and we're that we're at this point where retro nostalgic is a trend it's mostly a trend it could either be a business plan and you know of course it would have to come down into the holidays of just like adults you know collecting toys because even though there's people saying like man our society is getting childish and childish and there's a part of me where i kind of agree with that i kind of do see you know some of the truth but at the same time you know it's like the same thing of hating out just let them live their lives you know (laughs) Not hurting no one. I don't know. I don't know. I just saw the whole Matt Walsh video thing, and I'm just like, are you serious, dude? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyways, um, other than that, let's get into some gaming news. Do, 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 do. I just stole that from someone. I don't know who. But I did better not copyright strike me, because let me tell you, I've been, <laughs> I've been copyright strike before. Massly strike, because apparently when I de- get copyright strike, it always has to be in freaking, like, 30 copyright strikes, and boom. And, you know, I have to really beg YouTube or somebody to actually get my channel back. You know, it, it is what it is. Yeah, I took that in a dark turn. Anyways, <laughs> um, let's talk about Pokemon Violet and Scarlet because I just feel like talking about emulation. I've just been on this huge emulation train. I have now the Yuzu. If you know what that is, you know what that is. And let me tell you, I've been playing games on it. Oh, my God. But other than that, let's talk about Pokemon Violet and Scarlet because, man, there's a lot of bad press about that game. <laughs> There's a lot of opinions here and there, and there's this whole trend video in TikTok of like saying that Scarlet, Pokemon Scarlet and um, and Scarlet and Violet, Violet and Scarlet, whatever the new freaking Pokemon game, whatever. I'm I'm not a Pokey, okay? I'm not a part of the Pokey fan, the Pokey gang, because I'm not part of that. I never grew up. Listen, I grew up with Pokemon. Pokemon has always been sort of in the back end of like you know my childhood. I'm just like, oh, oh hey, there's Ash and Brooke and. There's Pikachu, Squirtle, and Eevee, and what, whatever. Team Rocket's there. But it hasn't been at all serious. I've been hearing... The only thing I know about these new Pokemon games nowadays is because freaking game... Like, you know, uh, game journalism and gaming news are just yapping about it all damn day. And I have to freaking hear about, oh, the new Pokemon Arceus is... Dude, whatever. And maybe I can't play Ar- Arceus. It looks cool. It's Pokemon ain't my thing. Okay, Pokemon Go was a time. Pokemon Red and Blue was a time. But those times are off. Let me tell you, okay? I, it's interesting. It's one of the biggest franchises out there, you know? Especially hearing the whole thing about, like, the, the Pokemon, how they're making a new series of, like, surrounding Ash Ketchum's daughter. That's pretty cool. I know Ash Ketchum since I was, like, a, like two years old. It's kind of crazy that Ash has been a child Ever since I was, like, at this point, Ash Ketchum should be damn 50. 
Ash Ketchum should be like 50 years old at this point. It really does feel like he should be damn 50. I'm just saying. He should be like only in a school, be a professor, freaking have gray hairs and everything, have a beard, have another beard of a beard, have a beard, 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 beard of a beard, okay? It just feels like, you know, it, it's, it, you know, like I've been hearing, like, you know, I've been knowing Ash Ketchum probably longer than I heard about Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know, but it, it just seems like, you know, this, you know, the Pokemon Violet and Scarlet, because uh, when I'm talking and mentioning emulation, Ryu Jinx being, you know, competitor of Yuzu being another, you know, Switch emulator, emulation, you know, you know, check it out the website and stuff like that, that, you know, it runs it better there compared to the Switch. And what's funny is that the moment I think about this, I'm like, that means you can actually have a better experience playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for free compared to buying it on Switch. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you, emulation is the new thing. It's going to be big. It's going to be booming. Okay? And a lot of people that are, are slowly embracing it. Young Yao will actually, actually mention it now. You know, beat em ups actually would mention them several times, especially <laughs> when it's new. And everyone else talking about Pokemon, uh, you know, the Pokemon and Violet and Scarlet, the whole thing, they have to mention the Ryu Jinx. They have to mention that TikTok video. Man, that would get something. But I understand how we have to keep it down low with the whole emulation because legal stuff and not water, even though it's like, you know, not illegal. But other than that, I don't know. That's what I've been hearing. That's why it, like, one is better in PC. And probably one is better in Onyx Player. Like, I've been checking out these handhelds, these emulation handhelds. They look fire. I really want one. And I don't know which one is like either the Ambernick, the Onyx Player, or something. <laughs> or an Android phone. I don't know. But on that, also there's this whole discussion about like the Steam Deck versus the Switch, which is beginning to be... Like, I don't know if it's because the Steam Deck is getting more numbers out there because of emulation, or maybe some other factor to it. But... Yeah, Steam Deck is like getting a lot of praise, even though you have like certain games that are not com cap compatible with the Steam Deck. But you know, that's what I heard. Also, p speaking of Pokemon, I mean we're done with Pokemon, but uh, let's just roll it back to Pokemon. Rip, rip, rip. Um, Pokemon NFT project. I heard there was like this whole suing thing about the Poke, like this Pokemon NFT, like something, something, and also it's part of Poke World, which is from Australia. And yeah, that's what I've been hearing. I just want to share that because I, I was like, yeah, yo, yo, wait, hold on, Pokemon. I forgot to give you some other stuff. Boom. NFTs. Boom. Poke World. Okay, you can go. You can go. You know that thing. Um, but other than that, let's talk about some other news. Uh, Fortnite. <laughs> sure, who wants to talk about Fortnite? Listen, I know there's a couple characters to Fortnite. I I believe that I was kind of like surprised that Wednesday was in Fortnite. I was and I wasn't because I was looking, I was like. That looks like Wednesday from the Adams Family. Is it actually Wednesday? Am I seeing things? It is. <laughs> and I see a bunch of other characters, like especially Gwen from Spider-Man. And we got, I don't know, DBZ characters. Man, they put everything in freaking Fortnite. The amount of money. And now they're getting sued. How many? The millions. 100 millions, 300 millions. I don't freaking know. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of brain in there. But... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Fortnite is going through something. And for me, as a person that doesn't care about Fortnite or Pokemon, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. But I w what I will tell you is what games I've been playing. So, um, I've been playing some new Switch games. Mario Odyssey. I finally got around to it. And let me tell you, it's actually a very good game. Not surprised. But it's a game that I've just been thinking about. And I'm just like, yo, this actually runs well. And... Yeah, I've been playing it. It actually has some great platforming. And, you know, that Cappy is, is always like a ball of fun. <laughs> Especially some of the levels where it goes to, you know, retro when you get to the walls or something like that. When you, you actually use different characters. I don't know why it reminds me of Kirby, the Forgotten Lands. Because, it sort you know, Kirby does the same concept when it comes down to really using whatever it is to actually use its characters and stuff like that. And also... Another game I've been playing is called Scourgebringer. I think that's how you say it, Scourgebringer. It's a, you know, 2D platformer. It's very, like, retro, like, you know, very, I don't know, like, 8-bit and, you know, cyber-ish. Has that cyber-ish feel to it, swords and, you know, epicness. It's kind of like almost less than N plus in, in different, in, in a certain way, you know. It's just like a very action kind of game 
with its own, like with sword and, you know, platforming. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Now, heading up to animation stuff. And yeah, let's talk about it. Um, Honeycast is back. So I just watched the new Honeycast, which Ashley, Ed Bosco, and also the original voice of Angel Dust being um, Michael something. Man, Michael Kovic. Mike, this, is that his name? Man, I forget. <laughs> I don't know. I just know it says Michael or the voice of Angel Dust. Okay. And yeah, they have a new uh, Honeycast. It's been a while. I don't know what's going on with them, but you know, people, they just had like the, uh, just the mass amount of subscribers asking them to do roles and stuff. And it's good to see them back. Hopefully one day I'll, uh, you know, just meet Honeycast. That'll be dope. That'll, that'll be dope. You, you know, seeing the voice behind these characters. Oh, I can see it now. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about uh, these gifts from Hasman Hotel. You know, speaking of like Hasman Hotel, because you know Michael, even though he doesn't voice Angel Dust anymore, which still to this day really just irks me. I'm like, what? I just don't believe that. I don't believe it. I feel like they probably got him back, or someone better. I don't know. <laughs> they can have me. Hello. Um, but gifts from Hasman Hotel. One of them is like uh, you know, could you? Kajino, uh, Angel does, as you know, in the stripping pole, and, you know, uh, that's one gift. The other gift, these are four gifts, by the way. The other gift is, like, um, Alistair, and you see also one of the members of the Triple V gang, which is Vox is there with Alistair as well. I don't know if Alistair used to work with Vox in a way. I don't know if they're friends. I didn't know that. I don't know that. Um, there's also another one where we have Vaggy trying to almost, you know, throwing down Nifty. And also you see uh, Charlie stopping Vaggy like, hey, don't do that. And I forget the fourth one. <laughs> I forget the fourth one. I believe it's Huskers. I don't know. It could be Husk. Uh, but yeah, those are the four ones where I'm just like, yo, this looks cool. Okay. The visuals look promising. The gifts. I mean, it really sets the standards of like what Hasman Hotel is going to be. And I am truly excited for what is it's going to be. I guarantee you it's going to be popping. It's going to be all over. And pretty much people are going to find ways to react to it. Which, I, you know, good luck with that. I wish I can react to it. I wish there was some ways, you know, just give me a list like what to do and what not to do. I'll react to it. But we don't live in that world. We just get copyright strike for nothing. Um, but, yeah. Earned that. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you subscribe, like, comment, all the jazz. And we get into the, the end part of this whole entire podcast. And tell you what, you know, I've been going through. So, as of recently... You know, I'm just going to say it. My grandma passed away. I think the whole time I've been recording and I've been doing these videos, you know, in the last, you know, few months ago. Or, you know, of course, the last time, the last month. You know, I don't have the words for it. <laughs> you know, I've just been recording in my grandma's house, you know. And now I'm living in a house where she's not here. And I don't know. I really try to avoid that concept because... The, you know, just no way of looking at it and be like, you know, it's it's just sad. It's it's so messed up. You know, because I I would always see her. I would always like you know like she was walking around and stuff like that, and uh, yeah, she's just gone. I don't know how to make a video at all because I really shouldn't. But I'm letting you know right now, is that even though I'm happy, even though I'm making these videos, even though. Like, you know, I'm, you know, enjoying my family this Christmas and everything. I'm grieving in the inside. You know, I felt, I have a lot of guilt. I have a lot of like, you know, emotions of, you know, wishing that I would spend more time with her, but I didn't because I was spending more time of actually making these videos and focusing on myself and I felt guilty. You know, I felt sad. And, you know, I, I've been feeling that all throughout it's only when I press the recording button that, you know, I show my, you know, my happy side. The emotions that help me escape. But some of these emotions don't go away because, you know, I missed her. And pretty much she never heard of her. The moment I showed her my channel was the moment that she was so happy. And she was like, wow. You know, one day I really do want to achieve so much for this channel. I don't know if, you know, I want to be big. Big enough to know that I can really you know, bring that sense of happiness and escapism to many people and make her happy. So, you know, rest in peace to grandma, 86 years old, and she left, lived a long time, you know, but these are the moments that my family are grieving and, 
even though we're like, you know, all having a good time, at the end of the day, we lost someone. We lost. And it's it's really hard. Yeah, I just want to say that. I just want to say that at the end because I can never bring that certain energy back. It is what it is. But, you know, never take life for granted. Live your life. You know, it's almost New Year's. It's Christmas. And yeah, these moments are really something. And I just want to say, you know, Merry Christmas. It's a holiday that, you know, it's deep to me because it fills me with emotions that makes me happy and makes me feel like, yeah, we're here. And it's good to actually know that we survive another year. But someone that I love did it. And, you know, rest in peace uh, to Grandma. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this last Vince talk. And other than that, it could be a last Vince talk. I don't know if there's more. But this is the last Vince talk of, you know, this year. Let's just say that. And that, thank you guys for all the support, for all the things you did for me. Every time I read your comments, it fills me with joy and it makes me happy. So happy. Because it feels like I'm, you know, you guys are like family anyways. Other than that, Happy New Year's. Merry Christmas. And you enjoy what you enjoy. But also be there with the family that you have. Because sometimes, at some moment... They're not going to be there anymore. And that's just life. And that's okay. Thank you guys. I'll see you when I see you. One love. And the peace.